Hello everyone and welcome to another Sample Sunday with me, Phil. Uh, today we are sampling the High West Yippie Kaye. Uh, this is bottled at 47% I believe. Um, I don't have the sample bottle with me. This was another sample from Tom at Tipples in Manchester. And it's a High West I've been wanting to try for quite a long time. Um, a lot of their limited editions really don't make it into the UK. When they do, they are very, very difficult to come by. So when he gave me a sample of this, I was uh, kind of very much excited to review it and try it. Um, it is a very unusual style of whiskey, uh, but that's not uncommon from High West as a whole. It is aged in a combination of Californian vermouth and Syrah wine casks. Uh, again, at 47% alcohol, and it's a blend of three straight rye's. It is MGP, sorry, it is High West's own stock at 80% rye. It's a Barton rye, which is 53% rye, and it's an MGP rye, which is 95% rye. Um, it's only the Barton element, which contains some corn. I think it was 37% corn, and the rest was malted barley. But outside of that, it is very, very heavy on that, what should be a kind of minty, spicy rye feel, which is a little bit of corn. But when you start including uh, vermouth casks and syrup casks, things begin to get a little more interesting. But here it is in the glass. Let me move out of the way so we can see this a bit better. Still in colour. It's beautiful kind of like blushed, really dark, Kind of, it's got almost like a filter to it. It starts off kind of golden and light, and then it moves into this much darker, almost brown feel to it. But let's smell. Uh, for reference, this has been in the glass for about an hour, just because I wanted to see if it would need any sort of aeration or anything. We get rye straight away. It is classic kind of wintry mint. Um, the syrup and the vermouth adding like a kind of red currant, red berry feel. Red currants specifically. Some warmth of like cinnamon, allspice. Pretty typical rye things at the minute, minus the red currants. Corn isn't pushing through a lot, it is only 37% and it is only in one of the three ryes that are in it. But nonetheless there is a slight kind of caramelly, very uh, soft toffee-ness in the background. A really unusual smell I'm getting off it is olive oil, which I, I wouldn't expect to get at all. It is coating the glass like rather nicely, like it is a particularly oily whiskey. There's a ginger note, like Jamaican ginger cake, that kind of thing. Yeah, the ginger and the olive oil thing, really unusual. I'm just gonna move my phone in case it goes off. Don't want that to like vibrate on the table. You're pushing those a bit further and that ginger note becomes a little bit more intense. Um, it stops being like a sweet dessert kind of ginger and more kind of like pickled or even like freshly cut ginger. Not huge bitter notes at all. Um, to memory, I've never actually had a Californian vermouth before. I've had Syrah wine. Um, but even some of the flavour notes on that aren't jumping out in a massive way. Let's taste. Well, the vermouth isn't on the nose, but you can certainly taste it. That's really good. That's very good. So the instant first taste is these 
natural, well not natural, but kind of these those botanicals and flavors that you expect from something like a Martini Rosso. It's got these wonderful kind of slightly bitter like gentian root barky notes. The cinnamon, the allspice, still kind of working in conjunction with it. I'm just going to skip the middle part and go to the finish because the finish is quite unusual. It's I'm not going to say it's very long at the minute because we've not had enough time to deal with it, but it is toasty and very gently warming. Like I can feel it here. Like I can feel this like this kind of pulsation of heat, but very, very welcoming, very gentle, really pleasant. Um, the kind of sensation you want after like coming in from like a really cold walk or something, or just a particularly like intense day of cold weather. It's that gentle rising of heat. The finish has kind of gone away a little bit now. Flavor-wise, we have some of that kind of burnt toffee, burnt caramel. It's not as dessert-driven. Well, it's not as sweet, for sure. And there is a, a lingering gentle oak note just at, like, the top of my palate there. Fun. I mean, this this thing is essentially like a a three blend Boulevardier. Um, I mentioned before that I never used to enjoy things like Campari and Negroni cocktails or Boulevardiers. Post COVID, or post having COVID, I love that stuff now. The first sip of this is like the first sip of a much needed Negroni or Boulevardier. I almost stick with a Boulevardier because it's rye whiskey, and it's that really nice soft. Bitter, but like warming, welcoming. I think when you use the word bitter, people always think, oh, no. Um, you know, bitter in contrast to other flavours is amazing as a, as a balance. The rye in this case is providing sweetness with those minty notes, with those cinnamon notes. The barrels too, I'm assuming they're American oak. Uh, purely because it is a Californian uh, vermouth. The, the Syrah could, in theory, be in, uh, an American oak cast too. But again, that soft contrast towards the finish of um, bitter flavours, but also quite a lot of vanilla. Sorry for this, there's like a fruit fly in the room, I'm trying not to get it in this glass. Um, it's on my finger, go away. Um, it's really good. It's almost like vanilla essence. It seems very concentrated, but it happens in very small amounts, like just kind of in this part of your throat. One more sip and then we'll call this a day because I'm probably going to take a lot of time to mull this over. Now the ginger comes back on the third sip. That's really good. Like, really, really good. I don't know what the retail price on this was. I don't know if High West even make it anymore. I would love it if they did, but I think it's unavailable. Uh, but that's really nice. I would happily buy a bottle of that if it was available. If it were to be scored, it would easily get, like, low nines, without a doubt. But we don't score on Sample Sunday, we're just here to assess. But overall, if you have a bottle of this, or if you've got a sample of it sitting around, pour it, let it sit for a while. It is very, very good. I'm very impressed with that. So thank you very much, Tom, if you ever watch this. Um, yeah, thank you all for watching. That was Sample Sunday, and I'll see you all soon. Cheers.